Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm going to call to order this uh, regular meeting of the San Francisco Elections Commission. It is 3 o'clock PM on May 19th, 2021. Uh, Secretary Delgadillo, will you please read the executive order and the other instructions for the public? Yes, I will. Thank you, Madam President. The minutes of this meeting will reflect that due to the COVID-19 health emergency and to protect commission members, employees, and the public, the meeting rooms of City Hall are closed. However, commission members and staff will be participating in today's meeting remotely. This precaution is taken pursuant to the various local, state, and federal orders, declarations, and directives. Commission members will attend the meeting through WebEx video conference and participate in the meeting to the same extent as if they were physically present. Microphones will be muted throughout the meeting and unmuted only when a commission member is speaking to minimize background sounds. Public comment will be available on each item on this agenda. Each member of the public will be allowed three minutes to speak. Comments or opportunities to speak during the public comment period are available via, via phone call by calling 415-655-0001. Again, the phone number is 415-655-0001. Access code is 187-310-6033. Again, 187-310-6033, followed by the sign, then pound again to join as an attendee. You will hear a beep when you are connected to the meeting. You will be automatically muted in listening mode only. When your item of interest comes up, dial star three to raise your hand and be added to the public comment line. You will then hear you have raised your hand to ask a question. Please wait until the host calls on you. The line will be silent as you wait your turn to speak. Ensure you are in a quiet location before you before you speak. Mute the sound of any equipment around you, including television, radio, or computer. It is especially important that you mute your computer if you are watching via the web link to prevent feedback and echo when you speak. Attendees who wish to speak during other public Comment periods may stay on the line and listen for the next public comment opportunity and should raise their hands to enter the public comment line by pressing star three when their next item of interest comes up. If you change your mind and wish to withdraw yourself from the public comment line, press star three again. You will hear the system say you have lowered your hand. Public comment may be submitted in writing and will be shared with the commission after this meeting has concluded and will be included as part of the official meeting file. Written comments should be sent to elections.commission at sfgov.org. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Secretary Delgadillo. Um, could you please take the roll? Okay. Uh, if you can unmute your speakers, I'm sorry, your microphones so that I can Ask when I call your name, if you can just let me know that you're present. Uh, President Bernholz here. Vice President Jung here. Commissioner Donaldson here. Okay. And uh, Commissioner Jordanic here. Commissioner Chapel here. Okay. Commissioner Mogi will either be late or might not be able to attend, depending on what her schedule calls for. So we do have a quorum. So we have met quorum, yes. And uh, I hear there is a new member of the city attorney's office who may be joining uh, the team at the commission. Is, is she present? Do we have an opportunity to meet our new colleague or not here yet? Um, so she actually, yeah, so I think she's only been able to join as an attendee. I apologize. That was probably an error on my part in instructing her how to join. Um, <laughs> Uh, I can I can move her in as a participant. Would you like me to do so? Yeah, if you don't mind, if you don't mind, just so no, she can briefly uh, meet the rest of the commission. Thank you. There we go. Great. Welcome, De Deputy City Attorney Flores. It's uh, delightful to have you as part of the team. Good afternoon, everyone. It's nice to meet everyone virtually. Thanks for being here. I look forward to working with you. 
Thank you. Um, okay, moving on to item number two on the agenda, general public comment. Public comment on any issue within the Elections Commission's general jurisdiction that is not covered by any other, by another item on this agenda. Is there any public comment? I don't see any hands raised. Seeing none, we will move to item number three. Approval of minutes of the previous meetings, discussion and possible action on the April 21st, 2021 meeting minutes, which are in the agenda packet. Any discussion from the commission? See any? Ready for public comment? Is there any public comment on the meeting minutes? Yes, we do have a hand raised, although it doesn't show a name. I will go ahead and unmute the commenter. Okay, you're ready and you have three minutes, commenter. Can you hear me now? Yes. It's David Popel. Um, I was having some technical issues. I just downloaded the material. I don't think on first glance I have anything uh, with the minutes, but if so, I will uh, let you know and we could possibly circle back to it. But I think they, they look good. Martha's doing a fine job. You guys are doing a great job. Thank you. If anything comes up, I'll let you know. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, lacking any further comments, can I get a motion for approval? Okay, President Bernholz, how do you vote? Oh, wait, we don't, we don't have a motion. I don't I'll have move. a motion. Oh, oh, a motion. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I apologize. I move that, I move that we approve the minutes. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner Giordano. Can I get a second? Second. Thank you, Vice President Jung. Uh, we take the call the roll, please, Secretary. Yes. Sorry. President Bernholz, how do you vote? Yes. Vice President Jung? Yes. Commissioner Donaldson? Yes. Commissioner Giordano? Yes. Commissioner Chapel? Yes. Okay. So it passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, moving to item number four on the agenda. This is a very uh, delayed um, assessment of the March 3rd, 2020 presidential primary election assessment and possible action regarding the March 3rd, 2020 presidential primary election. The agenda contains the uh, reports uh, from that election. Thank you very much to Director Arntz and the department. Um, any discussion? These items. Seeing and hearing none. Is there any? I guess I would just like to ask, since we haven't had this uh, covered this before, I think that um, the uh, from my observation, I did observe uh, at the, uh, on the presidential election, given all of the challenges, it it, it was uh, at least from uh, the observation of actually going to polling places, including the uh, the election, uh, the, the downtown election center. Um, it looked like it was run very, very well. Um, very smoothly, and I want to congratulate uh, the Department of Elections and, and um, uh, Director Arntz on the logistics, uh, on carrying out the logistics of that so well, uh, clearly well done. Um, I, the, um, the other thing is uh, then I would simply ask Director Arntz if there's anything we should, that um, you'd like to call our attention to uh, in terms of any anomalies, issues, or other things as well as highlight any anything that might have been in the uh, um, uh, iris log uh, that that we we might want to think about that or you are thinking about for future elections that may uh, require some uh, some changes. Uh, thank you for the good words, Commissioner Donaldson. Appreciate it. Uh, no, there's nothing from the March election that uh, uh, comes to mind. I mean, it was just the start of the pandemic. And uh, so we, we were in the process of running the election while also responding to the pandemic. So we, we bought, I think, 85 gallons of bleach for that election and a bunch of spray bottles so we could we clean up the, the, the voting booths at the polling places. Uh, so if your polling place smelled like bleach, that, that's the reason why. 
Um, but no, as, <laughs> as far as uh, March is concerned, I mean, the March, the primaries, the presidential primaries are always challenging because of what they call crossover voting, where the, the nonpartisan voters can vote for some of the party uh, candidates uh, for the presidential contest. Uh, and that also creates uncertainty too. Then additionally, when candidates are dropping out, they, they say they're dropping out of the primary, but they're, when their names are printed on the ballot, they, they, they might stop campaigning, but the voters can still vote for, the, for those candidates. So there's still those elements that are in play, but I, I think that the, the department and also the media uh, did, did a good job in getting the word out to the voters about the crossover voting uh, for this election. Uh, and also informing the voters that like, just because a candidate indicates they've dropped out, that you know, if you mark their, their name on the ballot, that vote will count. But otherwise, no, it was a challenging election in the start of the pandemic, but overall, I think that uh, you know, you know, we did, we, we, we met the challenge, and I think the voters met the challenge as well in, in getting their votes to us. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Director Arntz. Any other comments from the commission? Questions? I have okay. a question. Go ahead. Um, sure. On the vote by mail report, um, am I am I reading this correctly? It's it's um, in, the, in terms of the percentage of challenged ballots. Is that nearly five percent this election? For March? Yeah. I don't know the percentage, but it was higher than November than November. And the, the main reason was that we have more late ballots coming to us. After the, the third after. The, with they were, they weren't postmarked. By election day and arriving to us within 3 days after election day. Yeah, it was that. Um, do you think that was caused in some way by the pandemic or. Or was it just the usual uptick with the primaries or. I, I don't know if the primary, I mean, the, the pandemic had, I don't know the impact of the pandemic on that. Um, but I, I do think there was a lot of uncertainty around who to vote for, for the primary election, because a lot of candidates were saying, I'm no longer running. And I, I think that voters were waiting to the, the last moments to, to get their ballots uh, cast and then potentially put them into the, the mailboxes or, or however they got the, the ballots back to us after 8 p.m. on election night. Okay, and just one more thing on this. The the spreadsheet chart you showed us, or you, you sent, um, it has the, can, the category received after a deadline of three days after election day or late postmark. Is there a way to um, maybe subdivide that into the to distinguish between a late postmark versus receiving? Not, not for March, no, it'd be too late for that. Uh, not, yeah, for future elections, I mean. Possibly, yeah, we'd have to sort it differently, but possibly. Because that, that way we could see if it's due to the voter versus the post office, but, um, if you know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Um, but yeah, I, I agree. I th thought you did a great job given all the challenges that, that month. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Any other comments or questions from the commission? I see no hands or anything. So uh, is there any public comment on this item? This is the March 3rd, 2020 presidential primary election. I do see I one hand up. I will go ahead and unmute the caller. You have three minutes to speak, caller. Uh, David Philpel again. Um, just to uh, Commissioner uh, Jordanik's uh, question on the days after the election that late uh, ballots arrived and were or were not counted, um, he referred to a, a chart or a table. Is that something that was um, um, available or is that something that he got separately? I'm interested in that going forward. Um, I'm not sure that I care as much about uh, March and November. I think that's fine, however it was handled. But I'm just wondering where that uh, charter table was. Um, should I answer that? It's it's listed as the vote by mail report in the agenda packet for the March election. Okay. There's five documents there. 
Got it. Okay, I'll go through it. Thanks very much. It's also Thank posted on our, on our website after every election. That's true. Okay, I'm good. Thank you. It's all good. Thank you. And are there any other members of the public? I don't see any other hands up. If if I may, if uh, uh, also President Bernholz, I I believe that, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Director Arns, that everything that we have in our agenda packet is publicly available on the on the uh, election website. Um, I I think that pursuant to our charter as a commission, it is important that we have them in our agenda packet and have reviewed them. So it's good to have them both places. But <clears throat> everything that everything that it, and, and perhaps easier to find sometimes because there's a lot of information on the uh, elections website, but uh, everything is available uh, to the public. Is that correct, Director Arns? We, we don't post the IRIS report on their website. Ah, right, right. Okay. I have a question, uh, uh, President Bernholtz. Um, Please. That, you know, been in the past, uh, one of the primary functions of BOPEC was to conduct this assessment uh, of whether the uh, election was conducted in a free, fair, and functional way, and then make a recommendation to the uh, the the commission. Uh, you know, in the future, I think it probably makes sense to continue that role personally. Uh, but was BOPEC able to convene and make a recommendation to this commission? That's a very good question. I, Commissioner Donaldson, I believe the reason we're doing this now is because BOPEC was not convened and we did not do that. Is that? That's correct. That's correct. That was probably we, pandemic related. Because BOPEC it was pandemic related, and also we we um, uh, there were I think three or four election commission uh, meetings that were um, canceled uh, due to pandemic and or. Uh, lack of quorum and so uh it just it just didn't happen and uh we had made it such that we were not having standing bopec meetings okay all right good to know uh, duly well, noted um your interest vice president jung in, in ensuring that this is a task that would uh trigger the the convening of the bopec pursuant to our changes made last uh to the bopec at the last me two meetings ago Okay, well, I can make a motion. Uh, uh, I move that with respect to the March 3rd, 2020 primary election that this commission finds that the department carried out a free, fair and functional election. Thank you. Can I get a second? Thank you, Commissioner Chapel. Uh, Secretary Delgadillo. Okay. okay. Uh, President Bernholz? Yes. Vice President Jung? Yes. yes. Commissioner Chapel? Yes. Commissioner Donaldson? Yes. And Commissioner Jordanic? Yes. Thank you. So, with five affirmative, the motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Secretary. Uh, moving on to item number five, uh, November 3rd, 2020 consolidated general election assessment and possible action regarding the November 3rd, 2020 consolidated general election. So uh, similar materials provided. Thank you very much to the director Arns and to the department or they're in the agenda packet. Um, same process, any comments or questions from the commission about this election, which was run in the depths of the pandemic and to which I would add my thoughts that um, it was a remarkable job done by the department uh, in pulling off an election and keeping everyone safe. So thank you. I, I just have a quick question. Um, Director, and this is on the same topic. And Director Ernst, can you remind me or us um, with the November, the deadline, I'm looking at the vote ma by mail report again, and it's the deadline was 17 days after election day. Is that a permanent change, the later one, or was that a one-time emergency declaration? The the E plus three might be, the, the, that idea might be extended out to later in the election cycle going forward. 
but the but the later time frame for the November 2020 election was specific to legislation passed focused on the November 2020 election. So after that election, that extended time frame expired as well. Um, I, I do know that the uh, I think it's it might be e plus ten. I forgot. There is a we so there was legislation passed in 2021 requiring all counties to mail ballots to all voters for all elections conducted in this this calendar year, and I think it also extended the um, the return date, but I can't remember the date. Uh, we, but we can also process ballots sooner in the cycle in 2021, as we did in November 2020, uh, which is a big help for us. I'll have to get back to you on that on that date. I can't remember on the return date, but it, uh, but I would I would expect that that return time frame would be extended further into the election cycle as in 2020 when we when we go into the elections for 2022 but i don't know what that's going to be okay great thanks any other questions commissioners i see no hands from the commission um Secretary, is there any public comment? Yes, there yes. is. We have one hand raised. I will go ahead and unmute the caller now. Caller, you are unmuted. Okay, David Philpel again. I did find the uh, charts that we we're uh, talking about, um, and I think they are um, helpful. I might uh, suggest in the future um, if you're adding uh, information there, if there's a way to add the raw number received and then the number. Uh, not counted in the number counted and maybe include the uh, percentage. Um, I was about to uh, run a quick calculation on some of them and the total and, you know, clearly uh, in excess of 99% of ballots were uh, received and counted. And I think that's great. So when people say, oh, you know, lots of ballots uh, got lost or didn't get counted. Yeah, not true. Anyway, this just helps uh, document that. And I think just sort of reinforcing that um, all ballots received are inventoried and all of those that are legally cast are counted. That's the way it always has been. That's the way it always will be, blah, 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 is a good message. And however, we can um, both communicate that, demonstrate it and document it, I think is great. <laughs> We're good. I'm good. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Uh, unless there's any other comments or questions from the commission, we can get a motion on the November 3rd election. Okay, I can make a motion uh, that with respect to the November 3rd, 2020 general election that this commission finds that the department carried out a free, fair and functional election. Thank you. Second. Second. Oh, it's a race to second that. Wonderful. <laughs> Thank you, Commissioner Donaldson. Uh, Secretary Delgadillo. Okay. Uh, President Bernholz, how do you vote? Yes. Vice President Jones? Yes. Commissioner uh, Chapel. Yes. Commissioner Donaldson? Yes. And Commissioner Jordanik? Yes. Okay, five in the affirmative. The motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, item number six, the redistricting task force. Discussion and possible action on the redistricting task force, including but not limited to public outreach application process and timeline for appointments. Uh, this uh, We put this on the agenda in case there were interests or updates from either the staff or from the commission. The uh, outreach process is still ongoing, as you know. I wanted to um, extend my uh, official thanks to Director Arntz and the department for uh, translating the materials and not only into the four official languages of uh, the city, but also into Arabic at the request of members of the Arabic speaking community. So uh, great, much uh, gratitude there. Um, given that Commissioner Mogi has not yet joined us, I will also Note that as um, requested by the commission, she and I did pen an op-ed uh, op uh, 
Uh, the San Francisco Chronicle has chosen not to run it, but Commissioner Mogi has resubmitted it to the examiner. Uh, so that's the status uh, from us on that outreach. Any other comments or questions from the commission? That's a question. Um, and also the, the press release that was written by Commissioner John. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That that was uh, sent out. Uh, I noted that Director Arntz notes it in his uh, director's report. There's detail there. Um, can we have an update on whether any applications have been uh, sent in? Yes, there have been 13 applications received as of um, May 11th. I'm not sure Secretary Delgadillo if any more have come in since the last report you sent to me. Have they no, been, we have not received any. Have they been coming in? Um, the ones that have been received so far, were they sent more recently or, or earlier on? Just kind of curious on the time. It's a good question. Secretary Delgadillo. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm looking right now at the, uh, the emails and I do see one that came in at 211 today. So oh, great. Okay, so now we have 14. 15, make, make that 15, we have two. Okay. I have five emails here, but only two are consistent, are, are uh, interested in the redistricting task force. Yeah, so yeah. were the um, the ones that were received before today, were those um, sent in like just a few weeks ago or a couple weeks ago or spread out? They were, they've been spread out. They've been like trickling in like maybe every other day, get one or two. Uh, there were two that I don't know why ended up in the junk mail. So because one of them reached out to me i looked there and was able to find another one so they, they've been pretty consistent though have there also been anyone asking about it that hasn't yet submitted no no okay no. just okay thank you you're welcome any other questions from the commission well i guess i I do have a question for us, and that's are we are we happy with the number of applications that have been received so far? Because if if not, we could um you know maybe we could you know try to see if some community newspapers would, would publish something or just to kind of check in on things. Mm -hmm. So we've received, I guess, 15 applications for the three spots. Uh, there's two weeks left in the application period. I don't know if any members of the commission have any existing uh, commitments to do any outreach on their current calendars. I have spoken to both the Human Rights uh, Commission and done some outreach to the American Indian uh, community via some conversations I was having vis-a-vis uh, -vis the land acknowledgement. Um, we could certainly continue uh, to reach out to groups. I was surprised, pleasantly surprised to get, uh, you know, outreach from uh, my contacts uh, inquiring about the position. So I interpreted that as that uh, the word was getting out. It's not like I've been advertising it other than drafting that press release. How do other commissioners feel about 15 applicants for three spots? Seems healthy to me. I would agree. Deputy City Attorney Shenwert, did I see your hand? Yeah, if, if it's okay, um, if you could just join the discussion a little bit. Um, so I think one thing that may the help may be helpful to the commission to be cognizant of is that still the board of supervisors has not yet introduced its ordinance actually formally convening the task force. So that could be, and, and once that ordinance is introduced, and I and I keep inquiring as to the status of this ordinance, uh, but once that ordinance is introduced, that may generate another wave of publicity or at least get the word out and encourage people to apply. Um, I'm still not exactly sure when that's going to happen. Um, but that's one possible development that could, could could come up for us 
Um, and another question I really had for the commission sort of on behalf of myself and Martha is obviously the application deadline right now, at least is June 1st, which would obviously be after this meeting and before the next. And it would be helpful for yeah. us to have direction from the commission about what we should provide to you as of that deadline. Should we forward you all the materials? Should we just give you the raw number? You know, any anything else that would be helpful in terms of next steps would be very useful guidance for me, Martha. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy City Attorney. Yeah, that, those are two very important points. So um, if we were to expect that or anticipate that a Board of Supervisors um, official creation of the task force might unleash uh, more interest and more applications, we would, uh, it would behoove us to extend the deadline first and foremost. Um, it's kind of hard to play with that since we don't have any idea when they might do that. So, um, um, I don't know how other commissioners feel. Uh, Commissioner Deirdonick? Well, a couple of things, like one thing would be to kind of look at our own timeline and see, um, you know, when is the latest that we would be able to make a decision as a commission and then work back from that and say, if we want to have BOPEC do a, the first pass, when would that meeting be? And then to kind of see what, what is the, um, the latest we could delay it. And then, and then also we might want to um, authorize you to extend the deadline, you know, outside of a meeting in case. You know, for example, if the, if the board of supervisors were to post their ordinance. Like a few days after June 1st or something, mm -hmm. and then we would have still have time to do a BOPEC meeting. The, I, I did have a separate question related to this, but, but th those are my thoughts on the. On the timing. Uh, <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, if I could uh, sort of comment on Chris's question about the timing. Um, so really the deadline for the redistricting task force is that it needs to finish all of its redistricting work by April 15th of next year. Um, so, that's, so that's really the hard and fast legal deadline. Not sure if Roger is talking to his contractors. Um, but in terms of when we, I think the city was hoping to actually have all the task force members appointed and actually having to, its actual meetings held. Uh, I think the people I've been talking to have been sort of hoping to get the body convened in like August or September. Which would still be, you know, a, certainly a lot of work to be done in 7 or 8 months before that April 15th deadline. But I think something along those lines would be a reasonable target for finishing the appointment process. So I don't think by any means the commission needs to be done at its June meeting. I think there's still sort of more time there, uh, but hopefully kind of late summer would be when hopefully the respective bodies could finish making their appointments. Can I ask uh, Deputy City Attorney uh, Shen, um, August seems awfully late to convene the body to me uh, because there's, uh, as I understand it, there's, uh, you know, there's uh, consultants involved and hiring of consultants and uh, it sure, sure doesn't seem like that leaves a ton of time for this, uh, you know, work that, that, that requires the thoughtfulness that this body requires. Uh, and I know that what the other bodies do is not in our control. It's not in your control. We can only wish what would happen, but, um, any comment on that, uh, uh you know, it <laughs> does seem awfully late. I mean, certainly, Commissioner John, it would be great if we convened the task force tomorrow. <laughs> I would certainly be all in favor of it. You know, why not give the task force a little bit more time to accomplish all the work it needs to get done? But I, I think at this point, unfortunately, I think late summer is kind of a more realistic target. You know, as I mentioned, the Board of Supervisors, even though I've been inquiring, hasn't yet even introduced the ordinance formally convening the task force. Um, who, who is the, the member of the board that's taking the lead on that? Is it Supervisor Ronan or? Um, historically, the president of the Board of Supervisors, so President Walton would be the person who would introduce this ordinance. Would it be helpful for a commissioner to reach out to him to, to kind of 
see if it could be pushed along. Yeah, sure. I think that would be fine if there's a commissioner who would, you know, and I'm happy to put the commissioner into the, you know, just in touch with the relevant uh, staff from his office. I'm happy to make that happen. Okay. Um, also related to this deputy city attorney, what is the earliest, like, as of now that you think it could be introduced if, if it was, there was no contact? I mean, they in ordinances are typically introduced at Tuesday meetings. So this coming Tuesday, you know, we could get it done. Okay. And then so um the other thing is like in terms of like like of having a flood of applicants after the ordinance gets um announced, would um like how do we know that the people how do will there be any mention of the commission's application process when the ordinance is introduced? Or would or would like, how are people going to know that there's actually opportunity at that time? Right, and, and to, be, to be sure, I mean, there's no guarantee that the introduction of the ordinance itself would necessarily generate new stories or attention. I mean, yeah. it may or may not. I mean, some ordinances when they're introduced do and some don't. Um, but this ordinance, you know, as I've put it together so far, you know, does provide a little bit of background about what the task force would seek to accomplish and also references the various bodies, including the elections commission that would appoint its members. Okay, would there, is there a way to kind of more directly reference this opportunity? Like, could there be a link to, you know, like maybe in the supporting materials, say if, if someone would like to apply today, you can, you can go to this page. Yeah, certainly, you know, okay. yeah, there's a, I think a lot of different ways that could be arranged. I mean, 1 of them would simply be a letter from the elections commission to the board of supervisors clerk. Mm -hmm. Sort of alerting people to where they could actually apply through the elections commission process, you know, because there are the th these three different bodies. A very okay. interested person could approach any of the three or all of the three. So they may just need a little bit of a, a little bit of direction about where they should go first to actually sort of get into that, get into the various processes. Okay. Um, so commissioners, like, how do people feel about if we're, if we're sensitive to the timeline, how do people feel about someone reaching out to the president to kind of get clarity on when they're going to act. I mean, hasn't deputy city attorney Shen already done that? Why, why do we, why should we, is it, are you saying you want to do that? Well, I, I will, but it, it wouldn't take too much work, but it sounded to me like the deputy city attorney Shen, he was, um, It didn't it's sound like he was pushing them to do it more just sort of. You know, I think our, our position would be more to try to see encourage him to do it quicker. And I'm not sure if. Um, what deputy city attorney Shen was doing. Yeah, it'd be helpful to just clarify the process so far. So I've already drafted the ordinance that could be introduced at any time to convene the task force. Um, and I've been working with the clerk of the board's office on that draft. Um, I, they have it in their hands. My understanding is that they're directly communicating with President Walton's office about the introduction. Uh, periodically, I've been checking with the clerk of the board to see sort of where is that where that stands, what the current status is, and I just haven't heard that much in response. Okay. okay. I mean, have That's you been have you been actually saying like? You know, sooner it would be better. Have you been kind of telling them it would be good to get this done more quickly, or kind of? I th I think essentially, maybe okay. not using quite those words, but certainly I have been trying to impress upon them it's better to do it sooner rather than later. Okay, thank you. Well, I, I don't think we need to, you know, micromanage another body or even, you know, uh, you know, uh, so I I think we've done what we're supposed to do. And what, uh, you know, what I would suggest is that we convene BOPEC uh, and uh, if BOPEC, uh, uh, you know, feels that we don't have enough uh, applications, uh, you know, give them the discretion to extend the deadline. Um, I mean, it sounds like we do have time, uh, you know, uh, uh, personally, I, I, I think uh, the amount of applications we've had is, is, you know, 
reasonable. Uh, you know, I don't know how to gauge differently. Uh, and uh, I'm anticipating, you know, that if this is like any other application process, we'll get a flood, you know, sometime between now and the deadline. So, uh, you know, I, I have no reason to believe that what we have so far is inadequate. And I, I personally don't see a reason to continue the deadline. Um, but if people want, we can leave that in the discretion of BOPEC. Um, I, I would actually, if, if we do give someone discretion, I think it might be better to authorize the president because, um, for example, if, if it were BOPEC that were to do it, then you know, the deadline would pass, then BOPEC would convene, and then they'd have to kind of like reopen the process as opposed to the president could just ask the secretary on June 1st, you know, how do things look? And then they could just extend it without having to convene BOPEC. Maybe the president could consult with the chair, for example. So it might be a little more smooth that way. Fine with me, whatever the president wants to do. I, I think tying this into convening BOPEC to do the first pass of the um, applications is um, makes a lot of sense to me. I think uh, that BOPEC should be convened uh, the first week of June, which I maybe I'm making this up. I have it in my head that that's when we're supposed to convene BOPEC plus we need to give the public notice that we would be convening BOPEC. Um, I am of the uh, thinking that 15 applications at this point is is a robust number, certainly continue the outreach until that point. I also don't want to in any way be seen as disadvantaging those who have met the deadline and, and taken action under the current schedule by constantly, um, but or again, extending it. Um, so, uh, although I'm, if, if P others feel differently and think there's going to need to be an extension of the deadline, I'm certainly happy to take on that role. Um, it's, it's a quick question. At what point do we first look at the applications? Has there been a first pass just to see if anyone is kind of categorically not meeting our our minimum requirements that might help inform whether we have 15 viable candidates or whether we're really looking at you know 10 but i think 15 in general sounds like a good number but if if that number is actually fewer because there's some gating issues that might change our approach as far as timing that's a very good question i could say that um uh, Secretary Delgadillo has been tracking them in a spreadsheet, which I've been keeping an eye on. They're so far from a very, very thin review. In fact, just in a single uh, cell in the in the spreadsheet, not the full application. There's only one individual I've seen who uh, raises uh, raises an eyebrow about um, eligibility because of um, possible residential status uh, question. Um, uh, I think the idea, as I'm understanding the idea, convening BOPEC would then uh, empower that subcommittee to review the applications in full and come back to the full commission with a recommendation for um, uh, either we should decide now what, what that recommendation would be, whether that would be a recommended slate of candidates or whether there will be full interviews to be done by BOPEC, whether they'd want to have full interviews done by the commission as a whole. Commissioner Donaldson, I don't uh, know if you've got all of this background on how this was done in the past from uh, in 20, 2011. No, I, I, I do not. Um... Uh, though we had information from that, I think the the best uh, look back was what we was provided by Commissioner Rowe. Um, certainly, we could probably go back and look at uh, meeting minutes, etc., uh, to see if we if if we really wanted to dig into that detail. But I'm not sure how much that would influence what we'd want to do today. Um, I, and I, I do want to uh, also uh, acknowledge. Uh, that I did have that thought about the 15 
uh, and how many of those are, are seem to be even at a cursory level, how many are qualified candidates and, and seem to be viable candidates. Uh, so I appreciate Commissioner Chappelle bringing that up. Yeah. Again, just a very cursory review. There's one comment in one candidate's uh, information that uh, raised a residency question, but that can probably be answered by a uh, very quickly with review of the full application. Uh, from my perspective, I would want if we're uh, if we're delegating to BOPEC, uh, I I would feel comfortable um, uh, right now stating that uh, the expectation that BOPEC um, uh, you know review the applications, set an interview, and uh, and uh, make a recommendation to this body. So no interest in having the commission. Full commission do interviews. Have the interviews done at the BOPEC level? Um, well, I, I mean, that's why we have uh, a sub body, uh, and our bot, you know, our commission is entitled to uh, rely on, um, you know, the, the judgment and um, uh, the vetting by the sub body. So, um, absolutely. So, yep. I, th I think that's personally, I think, I don't think we need to. You know, we'll exercise the oversight that we think is appropriate, but, um, you know, by I plan to give deference to, uh, you know, the work of BOPEC. Right. Other commissioners? That, that makes sense to me. That's that seems to be the purpose of the, the subcommittee. So, reflecting on that, what I hear that would then require just to play this back for folks would be, um. There's a couple of ideas on the table. Let me just sort them through as I've heard them. 1 would be to, um. Convene BOPEC in early, keep the deadline as it is convene BOPEC in early June to review the applications. Um. An additional BOPEC meeting, which I would need to be convened to actually conduct the interviews then. Um, and so there's a notice to the public. Um, challenge as to whether both BOPEC meetings could occur between June 1. And the next commission meeting, although I would think that's possible. Um, Deputy city attorney, depending on the notification requirements. Um, so it would be possible keeping the June 1 deadline that the commission could have a slate of recommended candidates um, by the June meeting. Um, if that debt timeline is not possible uh, for whatever reasons, uh, we should still be able, keeping the deadline as it is, to accomplish that certainly by the July meeting. I hearing that all correctly. Uh, Commissioner, your turn. So, why can you explain why does BOPEC have to meet twice? What was the purpose of the first meeting? The first meeting would be to have a review of the full 15, and then I was assuming that not all 15 would be called in for interviews. Um, okay. But that's my assumption that may not be correct. Uh, and so that then um, a selection process would happen and the five or six candidates to be interviewed would be would need to that would need to happen at a second meeting. Um, alternatively, I suppose we could hold a Bo Quebec meeting that interviews all 15 candidates and it could be done at one. I mean, another another possibility would be something kind of in between where maybe the chair and the president could. Yes, maybe filter down some of them. Kind of Fire like we've done. With, kind of like we've done with secretary candidates. Okay, so here's an alternative suggestion is that the president, myself, and Commissioner Donaldson would pre-review and then convene the BOPEC to actually convene them once to hold interviews with that smaller set of. Yeah. Candidates. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I, I, I think that sounds reasonable. The second, the second uh, commissioner Jordanic's approach. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, I, I was just going to say, uh, you know, uh, 
part of uh, trusting BOPEC to uh, to is for BOPEC to come up with its own procedure. I don't think I don't I personally don't think we need to micromanage how many how many meetings or the procedure and I'm comfortable and trust BOPEC to come up with its own procedures. Well, well, I think that the, uh, Commissioner Jung, I do think it's important that we consider this as a commission. We're transparent about our evaluation process, so I do think it's appropriate that we discuss it here. Um, that said, um, uh, appreciate your uh, your um, uh, endorsement of the BOPEC process. So I, I guess I guess I, I I wasn't going to assume that I would continue to be chair. Uh, I you, uh, commit, uh, President Bernholz, but it sounds as though um, you'd like me to do that. Um, so I, I will continue in that role. Uh, that being the case, I, I would suggest that yes, I would I would like to first review the the resumes and uh, or the I'm sorry the responses that we have today to qualify those. I would suggest then we do consider a uh, a, a meeting on the ninth. So it wouldn't be the first Wednesday; it would be the second Wednesday of the month, yet one week before our next commission meeting. Um, and uh, at that time, we would interview all or at least the uh, any subset include up to all of the candidates uh, for the purposes of, of uh, referral to the full commission for further interview. <clears throat> um, I think that um, one of the other things just uh, in terms of procedure, I, I want to make sure that if we find candidates that we believe are not qualified, we still uh, enumerate which candidates were disqualified at that time. As well as the ones we're interviewing for again for full transparency uh, with the public. Fantastic, thank you. And I I would also um, take this opportunity. Then I will use president prerogative to appoint a third member to the committee to join us because I believe it's at this point just you and me. Um, I note that Commissioner Mogi has joined the meeting at three fifty p.m. just for the minutes. Welcome, Commissioner Mogi. Um, uh, Deputy City Attorney Shen, did you have your hand up? Yeah, just one comment in the process. Um, so our next commission meeting in June would be on the 16th, uh, yep. as, as Commissioner Donaldson mentioned. Um, so we do have a chance to have, you know, in the first across the first couple of weeks of June, a couple of different POPEC meetings. Um, that could be accommodated under sort of all the sort of notice and meeting requirements um, if you want to go that way. And I don't know if you want to, even if the plan is to sort of plan to have just one POPEC meeting, maybe plan to have it the first week in June. Just yeah. in case, and you want to have a second, we always have that sort of that available as an option. Uh, but certainly, I'm happy to work with you and, and Commission Secretary Delgadi on sort of getting the notice and agenda together. Thank you. Two things about the the meeting on the second would be that it is a short week. I will not be out of town, but others may be. Uh, second thing about that is that. If we were to get a number of, of uh, applicants between the first and the second, that would not give us a chance to review them before that meeting and advise them to come in and uh, for any kind of interview and would essentially require a second BOPEC meeting. My preference would be that we meet, uh, that we plan to meet on the 9th and that we do th this review on uh, the, uh, offline uh, mm -hmm. as, uh, and to qualify candidates and then have that uh, on the 9th. So the candidates would be invited to the ninth. Interviews would be scheduled on the, the ninth. The, the candidates that are qualified, yes. Yeah. Can I? Um, can I? Sorry, um, I apologize for being late. Um, and so I came in towards the tail end of this conversation, which, by the way, <laughs> the plan sounds amazing um, so far. I just had a couple questions around that. Is uh, so. What I'm gathering is that Commissioner Donaldson will be the one kind of um, selecting uh, the top around five, six candidates to interview. Is um, I, I assume it's based on kind of how we've been discussing um, and what are the ideal candidates that we've been discussing um, from our commission meeting, and then the the follow up assumption, actual question that I want to make is. Um, during the BOPEC meeting of the interview process, have have we created um, an evaluation or like a criteria uh, of what how we're gonna select? Yeah. The final? Okay, we have or we have I, not. I, we have not, and I think that that's a very good point, um, uh, Commissioner Mogi. So the, the the minimum the first review I think would be 
primarily just to make sure that they met the minimum qualifications as defined in the application. Um, and we would, and we would, uh, we would bring those uh, that are um, that are qualified for an interview. So potentially all 15. Though it sounds like there was one comment that um, uh, President Bernhold said. Uh, I don't know if you heard that part. That someone said that there may be a question as to whether they are a resident of San Francisco. So um, beyond that, we haven't discussed any further evaluation criteria. Um, so I, I do think that that is appropriate. Uh, I think that that we could actually make that recommendation at the next at that BOPEC meeting, unless we felt it was truly necessary to have a meeting in advance. I guess um, it, it is it is possible to do that uh, on the second just for that purpose. Um, so um, it, it makes I think it makes good sense. I'm um, we do want to avoid the, the having to interview all 15 and then sending all 15 to the full commission. We do want to, I think, have something where we, we refer, we think top candidates perhaps, but may, maybe that's an open question. Your thoughts? Yeah, so I I just was thinking more, yeah, about this is that I do think that, you know, one, we've been, we've had many discussions around this, so I, right. I feel very confident and, and comfortable and trust your leadership on, on, um, bringing the number down to qualify folks that we should interview during BOPEC. My one thing is that I do want a consistent kind of way for us to be able to make a recommendation to uh, the full commission. And so if, I don't know, you are kind of right. I do think we may need to meet really quickly. If we do all the prep work before to just talk through this, yeah. maybe the evaluation criteria, or I don't know. If I assume that's what we have to do, Deputy City Attorney, to be able to let people know, or how how does that work? Like, I, I usually when you do interviews, you don't really like it, it, if it's an interview for like an actual position you're applying for a job. You don't really know what the selection or the evaluation criteria is, so I'm not sure how that works. Um, uh, just from what I mean, a lot of other bodies, I mean, particularly the Board of Supervisors, makes a lot of appointments at at hearings. Um, they usually don't really have any set criteria in advance. Uh, they simply call all the applicants up to the mic or up to the podium and they go through them one by one. And they don't yeah. really yeah. have all right. yeah. like, a, like a schedule or a checklist or anything along those lines. Often they simply go with That's frankly, true. whoever on the spot they feel most comfortable with and is most suited for the appointment. Yeah, no pressure to be just perfect on the spot. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think we're being just a little thorough. So it's, yeah, thank you for that. I do recall that it's based on kind of, you know, we re they read applications and then you you allow them to speak and then we make a decision publicly. So, okay, that's helpful. Yeah. So yeah. We don't think, you know, a little further to that, it, yeah, I think it does make sense um, perhaps then to have a meeting on the second that is strictly focused on saying these these are the qualified candidates for the following week. So also that would, that would give some advance uh, and public notice that who who might uh, who we would want to have on the ninth, and that would be the interview stage. So I guess I am back to having two meetings, but the first meeting would strictly be to say, here's who we, we want on the ninth, and then and maybe discuss the criteria, and because I do think that there are if not criteria, at least the method. I and thought we, I thought the recommendation that we just got from Deputy City Attorney would eliminate a second meeting. Yes, except that I my concern is that without going into the ninth, and let, unless everybody's comfortable with me coming in because I I have an idea right now in my head of basically a rank and rate method. So, or rate actually rate and rank. <laughs> I I I like I said I've already voiced my kind of support okay. in in okay. a way to bring the top five candidates or six or I don't know what you yeah, that's what I that's exactly I'm thinking of like tiers of candidates um something like that and then uh that would be the, the rate and rank method by the anyways we we can explain that and I can I can flesh that out in advance of the night I mean as someone who had to go through the the secretary kind of uh yes. process yes. Um, I will say that I did appreciate the trust in the commission for me to be able to make okay. recommendations. And so similar to that, I trust that you would be able to bring in the, you know, okay. um, any seat. I mean, we do have three seats to a point, so I don't think you have to limit yes. it necessarily to just 
five. I mean, if there's a little bit more better candidates or good, uh, a wealth of. Yeah, well, that's why that's why I'm saying rate and then uh, I'm sorry, rank. Rate and rank, and then they would go into like an ABC bucket, that kind of a thing. And uh, we can and you can move the line depending on how many candidates we think we need in order to get three. And Commissioner uh, Donaldson, uh, w one suggestion that I would have uh, thinking about the number is that if um, if three is the number that we need to seat, uh, you probably want to um, you know uh, you know be I'm not sure if you're planning to rank all of them, but you probably want to have some alternates in case there's a change of plans anywhere in this process. Yes. Yes. So, uh, just trying to capture this for uh, the record, although not yet a decision, um, there is a idea on the table to have BOPEC led by Commissioner Donaldson, myself, and a third person to be appointed. Um, uh, now you've got me doing it, Commissioner Donaldson. Rate and rank. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. Screen out any ineligible candidates based on the paperwork on after June 1st. Rate and rank from the remaining 15 or so. Um, convene the invite those individuals for an interview on June 9th at a formal meeting of BOPEC. And from that meeting, BOPEC would recommend a slate of candidates. Or I, I would actually a I, slate of people to be interviewed by the commission. A slate of people to be interviewed is what would be my suggestion, and that that I would not do rate and rank before we were to meet on the ninth. We would just screen out those that did not meet the minimum qualification. That was my going to be my suggestion. Okay. Okay. And so, as as a committee, BOPEC would do the rate and rank, so that right. as we interview each each uh, commissioner could would give some sort of a rating. Uh, and uh, then we would rank those individuals, and that would be the result. Um, uh, that would and and those that we 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 figure out where to draw the line and send them to the full commission. And if the line happens to be at a, at a point where we don't have enough uh, candidates, we believe based on you know the quality of the candidates, then the recommended the commission would be to extend the um, I think the application period. If we were to if that were to happen. Right. I'm, I'm, right. I'm hoping and thinking it will be uh, that's unlikely. Right. Right. And so, just to be clear, we're also asking these individuals. Some subset of them would be required to do two interviews: one with both that's, and one with the full commission. That's that's what it would be. Yes. Thoughts, comments, alternative ideas, amendments from the commissioners. I see. Um, yeah, just said a oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, kind of a clear, little clarification. Um, when I was speaking earlier, I, President Bernholt, I didn't realize you were on the committee too, but um, just to make sure if there was any pre screening done before the first BOPEC meeting, and maybe this is a question to Deputy City Attorney Shen, but would, would Commissioner Donaldson and President Bernholt be allowed to do that pre screening together since they comprise the majority of? OPEC, so it just need to be one of one person, I think. Right, so yeah, he's, exactly. So this, BOPEC is a three member body, so no more than two members can get together to talk about BOPEC matters in advance outside of a public meeting. So <clears throat> Lucy and Roger cannot get together in advance of the BOPEC meeting on the ninth to sort of say, hey, we're not going to interview these X number of people at all. Um, I think that, frankly, I, I mean, this is something that, you know, I can talk with President Bernholz offline about, you know, there probably will be some way that we need to approach the people who we think are not qualified. And even if we do think they're not qualified or somehow are ineligible, I imagine we still may want to give them an opportunity to, to explain the situation at BOPEC regardless. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, we're going off kind of a cold record, so to yeah. speak, whatever they submitted. So. Realistically, I'm not sure how many people are not going to have an opportunity to speak at all to BOPEC. Um, on it's a very good point. It's a very important point. Yeah. Okay. 
And uh, I'm not sure whether we would need to replicate that process if we uh, open up the door of, uh, you know, having a second round of interviews in front of the whole commission. You know, in other words, whether we need to interview everyone again, but uh, personally, I would be in favor of get, uh, uh, deferring to BOPEC uh, as to the slate and what I, I, I guess what I had uh, pictured was, um, you know, going off the slate questioning BOPEC as to uh, the rankings, you know, having the applications available to us, but not doing a second round of interviews um, and evaluating on the papers. Okay. I, I agree with that. I think having two interviews on specific days might weed out people just based on availability that we would yeah. not otherwise want to exclude. So the outcome of the June 9th BOPEC meeting would be a recommended slate of three plus perhaps two ranked alternates or one or two alternates should one of those three become unavailable is what I'm hearing. Yeah, I'd favor even more alternates than that, but uh, yes, in concept. More alternatives, okay. Great. Right. Okay. And, and also, if I may add, just President Bernholz, you know, certainly, I mean, just so people's expectations are, are kind of set, you know, even if there's an unsuccessful applicant at the BOPEC level of review, I mean, that person, those persons at the very least will be able to offer public comment at the following commission meeting the next month. Yes. So okay. it's quite possible and quite likely you may hear from some of the people who are, weren't even selected by BOPEC at the full commission meeting on the 16th. Yes. Yeah, I think that's fine. Okay. So. I think um, on on how we would proceed, uh, President Bernholz, uh, I think just one other point then would be that on the morning of the second, we should get out a communication to all those candidates that they uh, that they would be there would be an, an interview at on the ninth um, that we'd receive their application and we'll, we'll, they will be interviewed on the ninth so that they uh, and giving them all of the location etc um, and access information. Great, it's a very good idea. Um, so, and which we can all prepare, we can prepare all of that in advance. Um, so that process makes a lot of sense. We will need a motion, but before I um, get to that, let me see if there's any other additional comments, alternative suggestions I, uh, on this process. I uh, see Commissioner Jordanic and then Commissioner Mogi. So if, if we know today that the date of that, those interviews, we might wanna just publicize that now like it, just let people know, by the way, you've submitted your application, you, you might wanna mark this day on your calendar as opposed to waiting until June 1st. Mm -hmm. Right, then we'll just need to put people in some court sort of order, but right. Yeah. Great, thank you. Uh, Commissioner Mogi. Um, for the sake of, uh, of fairness for all commission members, I just wanted to check in with you as serving as president and now also still because of last year's sitting on BOPEC. I just want to make sure that, you know, yeah. we're feeling comfortable with that. Um, maybe we should also talk about the committee members today. Um, I think that's what we've always done as a commission is that we try to level out the workload. Um, and so just wanting to bring that up. I very much appreciate that. Um, I was about to turn after, I think we should take a motion, get a motion on the table if we need one for this process, which perhaps we don't because it's mostly a BOPEC process. I'm not sure if we need a motion, but we also do need to appoint at least one member of the of BOPEC, uh, one other. I, I appreciate the concern, recognizing that Commissioner Donaldson also wanted to rotate off of BOPEC, but feeling like this is not an opportune time to have a complete turnover <laughs> of this subcommittee. I'm, yes. I'm willing to serve on the commission, uh, the BOPEC along with Commissioner Donaldson. Um, so, uh, Deputy City Attorney Shen, do we need a motion to move forward with this process? I think it may be better just to be clear about the decision being made today. And I think in its simplest form, I think the commission is proposing that both will meet on June 9th to interview the applicants who have timely submitted their materials and then forward their recommendations onto the commission at the meeting on the 16th. Thank, Thank you for that synthesis. Let me just see if there's any other comment on from the commission before 
uh, actually turning to public comment and then getting the, that actually as a motion. Can't see everybody at once, unfortunately. So no other commissioners. Right. Um, they have a motion before we hear public comment or. Uh, we can, yes, we should get a motion before we hear public comment. Okay, since, uh, since it sounds like I, I am continuing as chair, I think I'd like to make this motion. So it's, I'm clear that <laughs> I'm clear that I'm clear. Um, I would, uh, I'd like to move that the, um, selection of a slate of candidates and alternate candidates be interviewed and recommended to the full commission at a BOPEC meeting to be held on 9th of uh, June, 29, uh, 2021, 2019, 2021, uh, for, uh, to review and select those candidates from all that have submitted timely their, uh, application for those seats. Can I get a second? Oh. Uh, Commissioner right. Chapter. Good? Second. Okay. Yep. All right. Let me uh, turn to public comment if there is any. Yes. And we do have one caller who has raised their hand. Caller, I will go ahead and unmute you now. Oh, actually, we have two. But first, caller, you, you have three minutes to speak. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. David Pilpel again. Okay, so there was a lot of uh, discussion. Uh, here are the comments um, I have to offer at this point. If it's possible to post the op-ed piece um, on the uh, website, if uh, you have it or if Martha has it, if you could post that, that would be great. I would love to read what's been written. Um, even after the Board of Supervisors introduces the um, ordinance to convene, um, it's going to take some time to get that passed and take effect. Um, I don't know if it would be subject to the 30 day rule, even if it's not subject to the 30 day rule, the board, um, isn't meeting on June 1st, even if they send it to committee and it comes back, uh, June 8th would be the earliest. It could be back for a, a first reading. It's an ordinance requires 2 readings. That's to the 15th. The mayor has 10 days to sign. That's to the 25th ordinances don't take effect for 30 days. So that's like July 25th. Um, the board of the, the mayor and the board of supervisors also uh, have their three members uh, each so i'm not sure that the task force convene and and the board usually takes its recess in august so i don't know if the board even makes its appointments um in august or if that waits till september so this whole thing could be a while so the sooner the board moves uh the better um Anyway, I support this commission authorizing a letter to the Board of Supervisors urging them to introduce the uh, ordinance uh, ASAP. Um, you can, uh, on the on your process, you can certainly extend the application deadline now or authorize the president or BOPEC to, to do so. Um, I agree that BOPEC uh, should meet on June 9th to review the applications uh, received to date and consider um, the whether or not to recommend candidates and adjust the deadline. I'm going to wrap up in a second. Um, 2011 was certainly more straightforward because we didn't have the census delay. But frankly, I don't remember when the commission made its appointments or the specifics on that process. I could go back and check my notes or the, the, the commission minutes. And uh, finally, to manage expectations, I agree that the commission should explain whatever re review process you decide on to applicants uh, after the deadline. Um, so that people know when they need to be available and um, et cetera. But I think, again, you guys are doing a fine job. Hope my comments are helpful. Thanks very much. Thank you. Martha, you're muted. I am so sorry. Next, we have Jen Say, who has raised her hand and raised their hand. And I will go ahead and unmute you now, Jen Say. There we go. You have three minutes. Um, thanks. Uh, hi, I'm John Say with the League of Women Voters of San Francisco. Uh, so, yeah, so there is a lot that was discussed during this agenda item, but I think one thing I wanted to bring back 
um, was earlier about, you know, outreach. And um, I know um, that the commission had mentioned outreach to the Human, Human Rights Commission. Uh, another department uh, or office that I would like um, that uh, the commission to consider is to also do outreach to the Office of Civic Engagement and Immigrant Affairs, which mm -hmm. um, they were the folks that um, were in charge of the census and the SF count uh, partnership. So I, I think, you know, they might have also um, other uh, partnerships with organizations in the city that, you know, might may be interested um, you know, in uh, applying uh, since they were also interested in working on the census. Um, and other thing I wanted to bring up, or I guess I'm also curious um, how many applications uh, that were turned in uh, from the different language PDFs as opposed to the English PDFs. Uh, that's uh, I'm just personal curiosity. Uh, but um, I think in uh, Jill Rowe's uh, previous election commissioner, Jill Rowe, I think in her um, October uh, 2020 report that she sent about the previous um, oh, um, the process, um, I think she mentioned, let me try to pull it up real quick. Uh, the, yeah, in 2002 and 2011, the commission accepted task force applications, vetted them for minimum criteria interviewed all qualified applica applicants at a full commission meeting and then voted on its appointment. So, um, yeah, in case uh, anyone was wondering how the process happened previously, um, Jill, um, commission, 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 the commissioner uh, had written it in her previous report. Okay, thanks. Thank you very much. Um, Secretary Delgadillo, do you have uh, an answer to the question about applications via non-English language uh, forms, or is that something we should uh, look into and get back to public about? No, I have an answer that they've only been submitted in English. We have not had any other languages. I think the question was partly in uh, likely due to the uh, uh, actually like the downloading and accessing of the non-English language application form, even if the application itself was submitted in English. But you don't have that information. I don't have that information, but I, but it is online. So if they wanted to, if there was uh, an applicant who wanted to submit their application in another language, they could have done so because it's the same for any of the languages. Right. Where they were fillable applications. Thank you. Um, any other members of the public? Yes, we have Lauren Gerwarden. I will go ahead and unmute you. And you have three minutes. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Fabulous. Um, thank you for this really robust discussion. Um, there's so much uh, that gets covered um, in these discussions, and I want to thank you all for all your thoughtfulness about the process. Um, so I just want to let you know a few things. Um, having looked into the history of the past, um, oh, by the way, I'm speaking on behalf of the League of Women Voters of San Francisco as well. Um, having looked into the history of the past three district and task forces, um, introducing the ordinance did unleash a significant boost in media coverage and public attention and awareness. Mm -hmm. um, in, the, in 2011, from the materials I reviewed, sometimes the numbers don't always precisely agree. I believe the Elections Commission considered 28 applications for the redistricting task force. Uh, so, you know, seems to be on par with how you're doing this year. Um, and just a little bit more history on June 13th, the Board of Supervisors passed the ordinance and June 21st, the Elections Commission appointed its task force members. So those were very close. Um, so the, basically the Elections Commission was ready to go. Um, and, you know, in that light, I'd like to encourage the Elections Commission to share its views on issuing the ordinance, convening the task force with uh, the Board of Supervisors and President Walton. The Elections Commission, your role is just so essential in ensuring that San Francisco's elections and the processes that affect those elections, like redistricting, are fair, equitable, transparent, and accessible. The more voices that call for 
this convening sooner rather than later, the better. We've heard that from supervisors at the league. That's just generally a process point um, for the board. Um, you know, just like your agendas, their agendas are packed um, and they try to do things when they need to. <laughs> um, and, you know, I believe that if you speak up, that will make a difference. Um, I don't think it's getting overly involved because the Elections Commission is a vital part of the redistricting process. You are one of the three nominating bodies and it should and does clearly matter to you that the task force has the time that it will need for the challenge ahead. Uh, it is going to be extra challenging with the late data to have a late convening on top of it seems to introduce more challenge than we need to. Uh, so thank you so much for considering that suggestion. Um, and uh, if you would like some recommendations, you can always look at the league's website. We wrote a letter. I know you all got that um, with some specific recommendations on why this matters and why timely convening really can make such a big difference. And we're happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you very much. I'd like to note, uh, I said we do have a, a motion on the table, but I'd like to note that two of the three members of the public urged us to reach out to the Board of Supervisors and encourage the introduction of this ordinance. Um, so I'd like to close out the motion that is on the table uh, and then uh, pick up that topic again, if that's a legitimate act under this agenda item, Deputy City Attorney Shen. I don't see him on. Did he drop? Uh, I think he might be muted, but I do have a proposed modification to the, the motion if it hasn't already been seconded. Uh, I, Secretary, I, I believe it was seconded. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Hi, President. Oh, sorry. Oh, we now have two procedural issues. <laughs> uh, so we have an amendment to the motion that's already been seconded. So I'm not sure how to proceed on that. Uh, and also, I wanted to uh, pick up the co comments from the members of the public about actually taking proactive action and reaching out to the board and make sure we could still talk about that under this agenda item. Yes, so you can go ahead and talk about reaching out to the board and certainly it would be, you know, within the commission's jurisdiction to do so. And if you want to amend the motion after hearing public comment, that's also okay. Even after the motion's been seconded. So we just sort of, we need another motion and another second. Okay. Yeah, I assume it's a friendly, I assume it's a friendly amendment. Well, it let's is. find out, Vice President Chung. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, you know, incorporating the uh, the public commenters, which we appreciate very much, uh, you know, Mr. Pilpal and the two commenters from the League of Women Voters, I have three proposed amendments. Um, uh, one is to, uh, you know, just thinking through the the timing and the deadline, I, I would um, I would hate to have to uh, you know, kind of bind the BOPEC uh, if uh, BOPEC find or the president finds that, you know, in fact, that more time is needed. So first proposed amendment is to authorize the president to extend the application deadline by up to 30 days in, uh, in uh, their discretion. Uh, second proposed amendment is uh, the way the motion was phrased. I don't think you meant to proscribe a another meeting, uh, I, I heard uh, I heard uh, Commissioner Donaldson say that he was contemplating a June second meeting before the June ninth meeting. Uh, you know, and I think BOPEC should do that if that's what BOPEC wants to do. And uh, so, just want to clarify that that yeah, identifying that June ninth date as the meeting to interview that is not meant to prescribe a, a prior meeting. Uh, that's uh, number two. Uh, number three uh, is to uh, authorize the president or her uh, designee to uh, to uh, encourage the board of supervisors to pass this ordinance uh, forthwith and. You know, to you know, and you can do that in whatever form you deem deem appropriate. Great, thank you very much. Um, to supervisors. All right, so uh, 
Any other comments or thoughts? I was going to attempt to read the motion. <laughs> the okay, if, I, if I made uh, since I made the motion um, to the, the first item uh, in authorizing the president to, to determine at her discretion whether to extend the deadline uh, based on the review of the candidates, um, I, I would accept that the um, I if I, I I don't recall having in my verbiage reply, um, implied that we would meet on the second. But I did I did say that we would meet on the 9th and the purpose of that was to assure that it's it's in our notes and that we um, notify candidates. Um, so I'm not sure. Uh, I, I guess I appreciate the the um, clarification that it is not a prescription to meet on the 2nd um, and on the 3rd item. However, I believe that should be a, a separate motion. Uh, but maybe that's a question for Deputy City Attorney Chen. Should, is that something that would make sense with this, or does it, or can we include that with this item? It, it's completely up to you, Commissioner Donaldson. Uh, it, then, if that if that's not problematic uh, if, procedurally, then I accept that amendment as well. Okay, and uh, just to clarify, uh, uh, on the second one, I didn't I didn't mean uh, prescribe P R E. I meant proscribe. So, in other words, uh, what I'm saying is that the motion is phrased. I don't think we intend to prohibit uh, a, a prior meeting. Got it. Thank you. Uh, other comments? I was going to suggest it would be helpful to get a full readout again of the motion as amended. Um, that's possible. What I have in my notes, uh, Commissioner Donaldson, it's your motion. So, clarify. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, I did not. I did not write it down. But let me give it a shot if you want. Um, so the the motion as amended is to uh, is for uh, BOPEC to review the uh, applicants for the the three seats for the uh, elections appointment to the redistricting task force. And uh, provide a slate of candidate, uh, of, uh, primary slate, and a, a slate of alternates for full commission uh, approval, uh, and to um, let's see. I'm trying to remember the three amendments, uh, Commissioner Jones. Uh, the um, and uh, I, I and to be. Uh, Interviewed on the 9th, but not, but may meet before that to review the candidates. Uh, and uh, for the president of the commission uh, to uh, write a letter on behalf of this redistricting task force requesting that we uh, they take action immediately to assure that the redistricting task force has time to complete its work. And the third item, which was actually the first one that Extending the application deadline. Uh, extending the app and that the president can at her discretion, the president of the commission at her discretion can extend the deadline should it be deemed uh, appropriate and necessary. Thank you very much. Do we have a motion? Do we have a second? Second. Second. Thank you. Uh, Secretary Delgadillo. Okay. Um, uh, President Bernholz, how do you vote? Yes. Vice President uh, Jung? Yes. Yes. Commissioner Donaldson? Yes. Commissioner Chapel? Yes. Commissioner Jordanic? Yes. And uh, Commissioner Mogi? Yes. Okay, six in the affirmative. It passes unanimously. Thank you. While we're still on this item, um, uh, assuming I'm in the realm of the appropriate here, um, I, I know that the new bylaws uh, state that the, it's the president's discretion to appoint members of BOPEC. Um, given that we are uh, authorizing BOPEC to meet, I'd like to take this time to do so. But before I do so, I'd like to see if there's anyone who is not currently on BOPEC who would like to step forward to serve on the commission. The, the subcommittee, excuse me. 
I'll, I'll volunteer to join BOPEC. Fantastic. Thank you very much. So let it be noted that BOPEC now consists uh, at the moment of uh, President Bernholtz, Commissioner Donaldson, and Commissioner Chapel. Thank you very much, Commissioner. Okay. Can I? Um, oh. Oh yeah. Sorry. I'm sorry. sorry. <laughs> My screen is not showing people. I've got Commissioner okay. Mogi and Commissioner Jordanik. Um, I just wanted to offer, and since I am happy to reach out to the board of supervisor, I feel like. I mean, I just have, I could do this like on my, obviously on my own time, but with my line of work, if it's easy for us, if it's easier on your end, I don't think a formal letter really, because if we're really trying to urge them, I can, I can have a meeting with them and just engage. And I would want to lead on director Arns and just remind me, if you can remind me, I think you told me there was like a supervisor or other supervisors that have mentioned this and I just want to be able to um, discuss it with the right supervisor. So if that's all right, then I'm happy to do that. Um, I think that would be extra helpful. Um, uh, my understanding from the earlier discussion was that it's President Walton who is supposed to introduce the ordinance and that Deputy City Attorney Shen has already prepared it. Uh, so I think it would be a direct outreach to President Walton. Okay. I'm understanding this correctly. Uh, yeah, and, and if you don't mind the other suggestion, I, I think Commissioner Mogi may be also helpful to loop in the clerk in the board's office. So okay. Angela Covey on her staff as well. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. I can talk to Angela and to um, President Walton's team. Right. And I'll send you the draft ordinance as well. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, and Commissioner Jovanic, I think you had your hand up as well. Yeah, I just had a question was, um, do we know, or maybe this is to Commissioner Donaldson, but do you know the time that the the meeting is going to be on the 9th, just so when we can start publicizing the people that have already applied. I think we should uh, give that a little uh, forethought in that um, it would be if it were at 3 PM, as we have been doing the uh, commission meeting, that may be an inconvenience for some that have to work during that time. So maybe we can push it back a little bit later, but um, any, I, I'm open. Does anyone have an opinion? <laughs> Maybe push it back to four, like between starting at four. So if those can't, if individuals can't make it until after five, we can schedule them later in the meeting. Yeah, the only suggestion I have is you might want to uh, take into account uh, that you want to have it during the business day, of course, and uh, give yourself flexibility to schedule the interviews. And there could be several, and I don't know how long you're planning to take, but if you do it at four, you might not be leaving yourself enough time. So I would okay. suggest actually mm. suggest so the early, with, early the better. Okay, so then I guess I would suggest and uh, thank you for that input, um, both from Commissioner Drupanik and um, Jung. So uh, I guess I would suggest let's uh, let's plan for three p.m. on the ninth. Okay, maybe when it's finalized, we can post it on the website just yeah. under the application. And then yeah, Commissioner I, I will prepare a communication also for uh, with some of the, those details for uh, our secretary to send to the candidates. Okay, and then Commissioner Mogi, when you contact President Walton's office and the clerk, um, if they if they are able to introduce the ordinance before June first, then if you could maybe have them include in the materials our opportunity, so that way um, it would just be another. Um, Chance for publicity around our application process. You know what I'm saying? When the um, yes, I will. I think we could submit separately in the agenda packet. But I, yeah, it would. It would. Yeah. So, yeah. So I, I can I can figure that out and see okay. the best way to add it into the agenda packet. But it doesn't really seem like it's aligned with the ordinance. So I mean, I, I'll have to talk to the clerk if she would be able to attach it, but. I know the public is allowed to attach documents, so I'm I'll I'll figure that out if how. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Right. Any other comments or discussion on item number six? Fantastic. Okay. Moving ahead, item number seven, commissioners' reports. Commissioners report on topics not covered by another item on this agenda, meetings with public officials, oversight and observation activities, long-range planning for commission activities and areas of study, 
proposed legislation which affects elections. Are there any such reports? Uh, President Bernhaltz, do you do you want me to update on the uh, the proposed land acknowledgement? Yes, please. Okay, mm -hmm. so uh, uh, President Bernhaltz and I have both made independent efforts to uh, conduct diligence. Um, I believe our uh, last commission meeting was on the twenty first of April, and that day I reached out to. Uh, uh, representatives of the Association of Ramatush Olone uh, and uh, received a reply a few days ago uh, saying that they that group would uh, be willing to uh, work with us, uh, but we haven't heard back on uh, uh, whether any of the dates we proposed uh, work. And I believe that. Uh, President Bernholtz has also reached out to the American Indian Cultural District for, uh, you know, uh, similar uh, consultation on the proposed land acknowledgement. Thank you. That's right. Um, and I was uh, informed by the AICD, the colleagues there, that in fact the Association of Romeo Ohlone was reconsidering its. Um, approach to land acknowledgements and commissions and was going to, so they were going to put the uh, process on pause uh, temporarily. Uh, so that may explain why they haven't gotten back to you. Uh, and then I also reached out to uh, Michael Wilcox, who's a professor at Stanford, who's been involved in the land acknowledgement uh, used by universities. And I'm still uh, working to schedule a call with Professor Wilcox. President Bernholtz, were you also, um, did you also communicate with the Human Rights Commission about it or, or were they not as relevant? Uh, it's at the Human Rights Commission where I was introduced to the uh, folks from the American Indian Cultural District. So I that's see. how that connection was made. I see. Thanks. Um, can I provide a quick update as well? Yes, please. Um, so, thank you so much, uh, President Bernholtz, for um, helping with the final edits. I was able to talk to some folks that have, um, that are working. There was some turnover also at the Chronicle, so it was really hard, but um, it is a little bit of a different format that they would normally take on. So, because our um, the way that it was written or the way that we've written it is more of a call out. Um, so, I did submit the request over to the examiner. Um, and also, um, if that doesn't work, then we'll, there are obviously other local um, uh, publications that we can work on, but I know that it's coming up and we're, I am trying to see who would be able to publish it, but um, that's kind of a status update at the moment. Fabulous. Thank you for your efforts in getting that um, opinion piece published. Any other commissioners? Is there any public comment? Uh, yes, there is. We have one uh, commenter, Brent Turner. I will go ahead and unmute you, unmute you now. You have three minutes to speak. Uh, good afternoon, Martha. Good afternoon, commissioners. I, I was expecting to hear a mention of a recent couple uh, articles that have come out, and I just wanted to mention them to you. In case you're not familiar, um, there was a recently a study uh, came out. Uh, I've uh, testified in front of a group called the Little Hoover Commission up in Sacramento. Uh, Pedro Nava is the chair. And uh, recently they issued a directive to Governor Newsom mentioning that he should uh, immediately move toward open source election systems. They are the uh, group that are that is tasked with uh, matters such as this that deserve a, a good amount of inspection. And after um, some years of looking at this, their uh, comment to uh, the governor was to uh, prioritize this, number one, regardless of budgetary issues, 
move forward right now. Uh, and this is the same position uh, recently taking, taken by Congressman Swalwell. Um, he's hopeful that President Biden will include open source election systems as part of the national infrastructure plan. So I just wanted to mention this to you as you have all pioneered open source voting for the state of California and, and that goes for the United States. So in retrospect, just to say that work was not wasted. We, we managed to get through to some people and obviously with the current political climate of riots at the Capitol based upon a miscomprehension of our election system, um, it would be great if we had systems where we could show the losers that they really lost and that will keep uh, civil unrest at bay. So I just wanted to thank you again for your time and direct you. I think if you Google the Little Hoover Commission and open source elections, you'll see that now it has been directed to the governor and hopefully he will stand up against Microsoft and the vendors and we'll get some good security. So thank you for your time. Thank you. Any other members of the public? No, no All other right. hands raised. Thank you. Uh, uh, so let us move on to item number eight, director's report agenda. Uh, the director's report and the attachments are in the agenda uh, packet. Uh, Director Arns. All right, thank you, Arons. President Bernholtz. Uh, just to highlight a couple items. Uh, we we finished the uh, selection process for a consultant to support the redistricting task force, and the consultant will be a Q2 data and research, which is the consultant that assisted also in, in 2011, 2012. So that's good. There's some continuity uh, for the task force going forward uh, when that body is formed. But then also on, on Monday, the uh, rules committee. Uh, the committee uh, recommended for approval a resolution to uh, call a special municipal election uh, to consolidate with the statewide recall election. Uh, so even though the date of the recall election is not known, the resolution declared the intent of the city to consolidate a local election with the, the statewide election. Then regarding the, the date of the statewide recall, I spoke to the Secretary of State's office uh, or exchanged some emails last week and their previous projection was the recall would occur at the end of November, the beginning of December. The Secretary of State's office now is indicating that the recall will likely occur in November. Uh, but that's there's still a lot of steps in the process uh, to take place in relation to declaring a, a recall election. So then the, the, the November time is not certain, but it's right now that's the the best estimate of when all the processes would, would, would be completed and that the lieutenant governor could call a, a recall uh, for the counties to conduct. Um, it's unknown what support the state will provide the counties as far as funding is concerned. Uh, the counties are hoping that the state will provide reimbursement for the cost associated with conducting the recall election, but the state has not yet provided an in indication that monies will be available to the counties and if, if so, uh, to what effect? So that's still an outstanding issue. Uh, with that, I can take any questions on the on my report. Thank you. Are there any questions for Director Arns? Commissioner Mogi. Thank you, Director Arns. Um, I do think that the the recall stuff is kind of interesting in the sense that I noticed that the Board of Supervisor also, like you indicated. Um, passed a resolution to intent for a special municipal election. Does that do you do you think that it's going to align with the the recall election, or does it have to be a separate election? How does that work? Yeah, that the, the purpose of that resolution is to align the the, the, the local special with the, the statewide recall. I see. Yeah. So it will happen together, is what you're saying. Right. So, so right now, like we know that the assessor's office, the, the assessor's contest will be the local election. That's that's the one known contest or entity that or content that will be on the ballot. Uh, in addition to the statewide recall, but then we also have the local recall petitions that are circulating. Potentially, depending if any gets submitted and the timing, 
uh, the submission of those petitions, those elections could be folded into the statewide recall election. And then also any local measures uh, that the, or district measures, like the school district, for instance, if they want to put a measure on the ballot, the, the, the cities would, would consolidate that school district measure with the statewide recall election. Okay, so can you help help me understand then the the funding of it in that sense? Would the city be the county be paying for it, or is it that? What's the connection then? The funding. Yeah, because yeah. you said this. Yes, yeah. to how if the state's going to be providing any support in funding? Yeah. You just yeah. So so the, the, there's a there's a the so election code indicates that the, the, the state. Uh, we'll, we'll consider reimbursing the counties for the costs associated with conducting a statewide special election, such as a recall election. Uh, but the state has not committed any monies yet to reimbursing the counties for those costs. Um, but also, if if the city when the city consolidates its local election with the statewide recall, the the state will not reimburse the county for its costs for its local special election. So just like if there's a, a special district election uh, for a measure that goes on the ballot, the state would not reimburse the, the county or the school district right now for putting that, that measure on the ballot. And then do you anticipate the, uh, if the recall efforts locally go through, whether it's district attorney or board of education, or others, I, I don't know anyone else that's still in, in consideration. Um, will that likely just be consolidated in the November election, the special election? Is that the goal or do you, does it happen? As, is there a scenario where you see where we're going to have to do a separate election? I guess that was my question. Yeah, it's all a matter of timing. So it, it depends on when, if there's a, a, re, a local recall petition submitted to this department, when that, that that petition is submitted, when we we complete the review of the petition, and where we are in relation to the actual date of the statewide recall election, potentially we could run a, a statewide re, consolidated statewide recall election with local measures with the assessor's office on the ballot, and then then later on a month or so later have a recall election for a local office. So it's all a matter of timing on on how much can get consolidated with with the. The election potentially is going to take place in November. Okay, thank you for that information. Mm -hmm. Any other questions from the commission? Yes, uh, just uh, on uh, Director Arntz, I um, I sent you a mail last month uh, regarding uh, as you review the website and how and. To with the suggestion, or at least my observation, that it seems rather difficult and not clear how to request a digital uh, voter information pamphlet for the elections. And I was just wondering, uh, since I hadn't seen a response, if you take, if you had a chance to look at that and um, considered that at all. Yeah, so it's in, it's, it's in my report actually. So one of the uh, the, the changes we're making to the uh, the website is to include a tab in the voter portal. And that's actually the, the section on the website where voters would would, would navigate to 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 uh, to, re, to stop receiving right. a hard copy voter information pamphlet in the mail and then receive a digital uh, a link to a digital version instead. And then also we can uh, we are we'll plan on providing no, notice in the mailers that we send out around the election and also during our, our outreach, which we do anyway. I mean, it's not something we haven't done in the past. Um, but we can we can look at that again. The the outreach uh, as far as the mailers are concerned, and the tablings and that we do on the community things like that, and see if we can't bolster the people receiving uh, or using a, a digital version of the, of the voter information pamphlet. But on our website, we, we're already making plans to uh, make it more obvious to voters when they when they go to their voter portal that they can request to receive a, a use a virtual a, a digital version of the voter information pamphlet. Great. I, I'm sorry. I, you know, I read this quickly, and I I don't know how I missed that because that's what I was even looking for. It, but I see it now. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions, comments?
I do not see any. Uh, are there any members of the public? I don't see any hands raised. Okay, one last scroll through the windows here. Okay, thank you very much, Director Ernst. Um, it takes us to agenda item nine, discussion and possible action regarding items for future agendas. Uh, we will have uh, uh, already on the list for the June meeting would be uh, the discussion of the slate of candidates from the from BOPEC. Uh, the uh, annual report uh, has been moved from this month to the next report. Uh, we may have more information on the land acknowledgement, so we will see where we are in the pursuit of that. Are there any other agenda items people would like to recommend? Commissioner Jordanik. I think you're muted. Sorry. Um, I think I saw a city email recently that city hall is opening up or has opened up. Can, and I'm, I'm wondering, um, does anyone have an update on whether we are going to be meeting in person again? Yeah. Um, you were breaking up commissioner of but what I heard was, is there, uh, will there be any update on when we will be meeting in person as a commission? Is that the question? Yes. Okay. Uh, thank you for asking that. Um, I all I know is that uh, according to Director Arndt, City Hall will be reopening on June seventh. Is there any other information on uh, that anyone is aware of about commission meeting? So the the board will will begin meeting in person uh, for the uh, during starting in, in June uh, June eighth, I guess. Uh, but commissions and committee board committee meetings will be meeting later in person. That date has not been set that I'm aware of. So for the time being, commissions and, and board committees will be, will be meeting remotely. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. So we and will then, plan on June meeting at least being remote. Correct. Okay. And then my other question is: um, Are we still planning on doing a recess in July? Uh, yes. That's what I was planning. Okay. So given the given the timing of the task force, I think uh, we might be back in session in August. Should for whatever reason. Okay, that's all I had. To ask. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, any other questions or comments or suggestions for the agenda? So, um, I'm sorry, my Wi Fi is right. kind of completely flat, so I can't see anybody. Yeah, uh, yeah. I don't know if I can type in a note here <laughs> to convey this, but um, I had prior asked for a um, an agenda item about uh, the digital version of the voter information pamphlet. It's great to see progress on the website. Uh, however, I'd also like to uh, for us to discuss this further as a uh, how we can actually drive awareness of that option. Uh, again, with the idea that this is a, a consumption of, of resources, a waste of paper uh, and uh, taxpayer dollars uh, that. Um, but I think uh, and there's an opportunity to serve the public in by reducing that. Hmm. I can hear you. I think we can hear you, Commissioner Donson. Which, which part did you hear? Uh, I, I'm saying <laughs> I could hear everything. I, I'm thinking that the president is maybe not connected right now. Okay. I, I can also drop her an email in the interest of time. Right. And if, if Lucy is unable to rejoin, you know, Commissioner Zhang, you can take over. I'm not sure if she was going to be technically able to reconnect all right well uh <laughs> meeting adjourned oh, uh, <laughs> actually we do need to take public comment oh yeah um, yes is there any public comment yes we have one hand raised and it's lauren jordan i will go ahead and unmute you you have three minutes to speak there you go 
<laughs> Sorry to keep you on longer than you seem to want to. Um, yeah, I've got an errand run too. But uh, so this is a bit early. But I like to see good ideas, especially especially ideas uh, that promote accessibility. Um, I, you know, I'd like to uh, suggest that you, as you are starting to get the chance to meet in person, as it starts becoming reality, or at least is on the horizon, consider continuing these meetings in a hybrid format where you have some version of virtual accessibility is still there. Um, you know, we are, you know, it's very exciting that we are, you know, getting more people vaccinated, but, um, you know, by retaining some virtual access to these meetings, we're going to keep the meetings accessible to people who are still unable to get vaccinated. And there's still plenty of our neighbors who are having that issue. Um, also for people who have immune problems and we're not sure how well the vaccine covers them um, in closed spaces. And also, you know, and this is a big one, people who struggle with childcare and caregiving. Um, you know, we, we may have vaccines, but we haven't really fixed the child care and caregiving issue. Um, and I, you know, I, I know that being in person is going to be great. Giving hugs is going to be great. Uh, seeing body language is going to be great. Um, but, uh, and I look forward to seeing all of you in person and showing you my face. But uh, you know, I think that we we have an opportunity to take the accessibility that people have gotten uh, over the past year and to continue it going forward and make these processes more available to more San Franciscans. So uh, just that thought uh, as things roll forward. So thanks so much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great points. Thank you. Any other yeah. comment? Nope, that was it. Okay, any other commissioner comment? I think okay. that that is a, that was, I would guess I would just like to follow up on that. I, you know, I think that this, before I was on the commission, I've struggled with coming to, with coming to some committee and, and uh, subcommittee meetings of the board of supervisors in terms of timing and, and the cost of parking and all kinds of things. So I do, I don't know if it's going to be entirely our choice. I certainly, to the extent that it is our choice to keep meetings open to Zoom and phone participation, I, I strongly endorse that. Yeah, I, yeah. I feel the same way. Uh, you know, uh, the commenter is exactly right. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, even, even those who are vaccinated, some people are immune compromised and they may not feel safe coming in person. And I don't know if there is a requirement that these be held in person or um, you know, whether the statute requires uh, commissioners uh, attend in person, but that point is very well taken. Any other comments? Could could maybe um, Deputy City Attorney Shendis share any info he has on that point? Is there any, do we have any discretion on that? Sure, very briefly, you know, obviously this is not really a agendized topic, but very briefly, um, so the reason that we are all allowed to meet remotely is by virtue of emergency orders issued by the governor and by right. the mayor, uh, temporarily suspending provisions of the state Brown Act, as well as provisions of our city charter. Once those emergency orders fall away, and I expect they will fall away in the coming months, we will be back subject to those legal requirements, some of which could be changed, uh, but need to be changed either through state legislative process or amendments to the charter. So, We'll see. I mean, there certainly is a possibility that you know public officials and the public would be interested in having this as an option going forward, but we would have to go through the normal legislative and lawmaking process to make that happen. Mm. So there's mm. going to be some period where it seems likely we will have to be in person. Although I think going to um, Lauren's point, maybe there are ways that we can build up a little bit of remote functionality nonetheless. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Any other comments? All right, it's 4.59, meeting adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night, everyone.